Today I want to talk to you about assembling a creative suite of apps for your iPad. The iPad is a serious creative machine, but the primary maker of creative apps, Adobe, has mostly ignored the iPad, especially up until recently. And so I want to talk to you today about the apps that I have found to replace Creative Cloud apps on my iPad. Now, a couple weeks ago, I did a video on alternatives to the Creative Cloud on desktop, and you'll notice that there's a lot of similarities here, but there are some differences when it comes to creating the Creative Suite on the iPad. Since I am a travel blogger, I need to do a lot of my creative work on the road while I'm traveling in cars and on airplanes, and it's just so much more convenient for me to carry my iPad with me than to carry my laptop with me or to pull it out in those kinds of situations. And so I really have needed to find these apps that will allow me to still do my work even while I am actively on the road. So I wanna share those with you now, and we'll just kind of go through the main creative apps and their alternatives. First up, let's talk about Photoshop. Now, all of 2019, Adobe had promised that they were bringing real Photoshop to the iPad. And we waited and we waited and we waited. And finally, just barely squeaking in at the end of 2019, real Photoshop came out on the iPad. The reason they called it real Photoshop was because Adobe had created these really half-hearted attempts at a Photoshop application on the iPad or on the iPhone before that were really bad. And then when real Photoshop came out, they had promised that it would be something better, something that creative professionals could actually use and it turned out it was a real letdown. Um, I was really hoping that Adobe would show that they had a commitment to a mobile workflow when they brought out Photoshop for iPad, but it just wasn't full featured at all. It has been really a pain to work with. It's like they didn't really give the thought to the user interface that they needed to on mobile. It just hasn't worked out good at all. And since I've been using Affinity Photo for years on iPad already, I didn't have any reason to try and stick with Photoshop. So I just went straight back to Affinity Photo. And you know from my last video that I said you could replace Photoshop on desktop with Affinity Photo as well. And so this is great. Your mobile and your desktop can work together without any problems. And so Affinity Photo is just a really full featured app on the iPad as well as on the desktop. There are really no differences between the iPad and desktop version. And so you can do basically anything that you need to straight from the iPad which is just not the case for Photoshop on the iPad. Now for the drawing elements that a lot of people like Photoshop for, you can use Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer for that, but I found that Procreate is even a lot better. Procreate is just $10 on the iPad and it is just an incredible drawing app. This also is better than Adobe's answer on the iPad, which has been an app called Fresco. Fresco has been out a little bit longer than Photoshop on the iPad, but it suffers from a lot of the same problems, although it does seem like the user interface is better than Photoshop. But Procreate is a lot cheaper and has a lot more development history behind it already, and it just works really well. So I would just go ahead and use Procreate for all of your drawing needs on the iPad. It's not that expensive. It works flawlessly with Apple Pencil. So just go ahead and use Procreate. Next up, let's talk about Illustrator. So Adobe has announced Illustrator for the iPad now, supposedly coming out soon in the next year, but we know that it took them forever to bring Photoshop out on the iPad once they started working on it. So let's not hold our breath for Illustrator coming out anytime soon, okay? And we don't need to, because Affinity Designer has been out on the iPad for a long time already. It works super well. It is a fully functional vector editor on the iPad, and I use it all the time for my vector work. So I would just go ahead, use Affinity Designer, works really well. It's got all of the tools that you need to create your vector artwork, and it runs really smoothly. Even on slower iPads, it runs super smoothly. So there's no reason to wait around for Illustrator to come. I love the way that you're able to draw out your vectors in Affinity Designer and create stunning logos and illustrations and basically anything else that you need to. So Affinity Designer is where I would go with on this because it is such a fully functional vector editor. Now, sometimes I don't need all of the bells and whistles of a vector editor. I just need something simple to knock out a design with, to knock out some concepts with. And for that, I really like Assembly. Assembly is a great app. Now, they do have a subscription service and we don't wanna get back into subscriptions. That's why we're leaving Adobe. But the free version of Assembly without the subscription actually lets you do a lot of things to just work with shapes and create really cool designs. And so I would just go with that for like simple mocking up while you're on the road and working on it. I really like assembly for that. Next up, let's talk about Premiere Pro, the video editor from Adobe. 
So Adobe has released Premiere Pro Rush on a mobile, so iPhone and iPad can run it. And I found that it's not very good. It still requires you to have a subscription to Adobe to use it. And it just was a bit of a, I don't know, it's just not very good for me and my workflow. Some people have said that they like it and it's uh, simplicity over Premiere Pro, but I really need a fully functional video editor. So for that, I use LumaFusion. I did used to use iMovie, Apple's own product, but it just wasn't fully featured enough for me to really create my videos. And so I use LumaFusion for all of my editing on the go, and I am really impressed with LumaFusion as an iPad app and how much it's able to handle. There's a lot that it can do. Now, it's not totally perfect yet. I'm still waiting to be able to edit straight from a hard drive. That will really make my workflow work a lot better. And there are definitely things like speed ramping that we don't have in it yet and other things that we have to kind of work our way around. But for an iPad editor, it is the best out there, no question. And so go ahead, get LumaFusion. It's only 20 or $30 in the App Store and gives you a full set of video editing features for your iPad. It works really well and smoothly. It has an autosave feature to make sure that you don't lose your work. I just really can't recommend LumaFusion enough. Now for replacing Lightroom, I talked about this in my last video as well because Adobe has already released Lightroom on the iPad and it really is probably the best mobile application that Adobe's ever released and a lot of people like it a lot and it is pretty good. My problem is I like to use Lightroom as a batch editor. That's why I use it and it just doesn't work super well for batch editing on the iPad and so I use Darkroom and I talked about Darkroom before. But Darkroom is great editor, it's great for batch editing, and it works really smoothly and really well on the iPad. So I would really recommend it. It's free to download and then you can unlock all of the features which are filters and curves and color control uh, just for a $10 in-app purchase. So not much at all. And it's a really professional app and allows you to batch edit very quickly while you're on the go. So I would really recommend that. Um, the one thing that I really hope will get improved in the future is the shadows and highlights feature on it. That just doesn't seem to work as well as it does in Lightroom. And so I hope that that will be improved, but for the most part, it can do everything that I need Lightroom to do as a mobile application. And Darkroom doesn't offer cloud storage, so they don't force you into their cloud storage plan like Adobe does. So you can just store things and you can export directly to your external hard drive through iPad OS or to the internal hard drive on your iPad or to a cloud drive through the Files app. So there's a lot of options that you have there with Darkroom. Adobe just doesn't make it easy to do those things because they really wanna lock you into their cloud storage ecosystem. So I really recommend that you look at replacing Lightroom with Darkroom on your iPad. Moving on, if you want to be doing audio editing on your iPad, you can just use GarageBand, which comes free with any iPad. It doesn't come downloaded on the device, but Apple will give it to you for free through their app store. So just go ahead and download GarageBand and use that for your audio editing. It's not a crazy full featured audio editor, but for everything that I've needed, which is mostly podcasting stuff and recording voiceovers, I found that GarageBand can do what I need it to do. And I've never really used Audition as part of the Creative Cloud anyways, so I can't really speak to how well they compare to each other, but I think that you'll find GarageBand can do most everything that you need it to do while you're on the go. Lastly, I want to talk about InDesign. I have not found a good InDesign alternative on the iPad yet. Now, Affinity has Affinity Publisher on desktop, and they have said that they have plans to bring that to iPad as well, so I'm sure that when that's released, that's what I'll replace InDesign with. For now, anything that I would do in InDesign as far as design work goes, I mostly use Affinity Designer for on the iPad side. And so Affinity Designer can do a lot of those things that I need to do. It's still not great at handling text. There isn't really, in my estimation, a great text handler on the iPad yet. And so hopefully that's something that will be coming. But Adobe also has not released any plans for bringing InDesign to the iPad. So I guess we'll just have to keep holding out and hope that something great comes out. Hopefully Affinity Publisher will come sooner than later and we'll be able to have the full suite there on our iPads. Okay, that is it for the apps that I recommend. Just to recap here, to replace Photoshop, I recommend that you use Affinity Photo and Procreate. To replace Illustrator, I recommend that you use Affinity Designer and if you want to, also Assembly. And to replace Premiere, I recommend that you use LumaFusion. To replace Lightroom, I recommend that you use Darkroom. And for audio editing, I recommend that you use GarageBand. 
if you are thinking of doing a lot of creative work on your iPad and using some of these apps, I do have classes on most of these over on Skillshare, so I'll leave links to those in the description of this video, and I will be adding more classes as we go throughout the year, so keep checking back to see what I have available for you to be able to learn to do more creative work on the go. If you have other apps that you recommend on the iPad, please go ahead and leave them in the comment section of this video, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.